Tony Selzo here with the zip line. We got a great show today. I'm so excited. I've got Brian Rowe right here in what, Fishers, Indiana? How far are you down the road here? Absolutely. Uh, actually, inside the loop of Indianapolis. Inside the loop. We, Brian is the VP of Client Success from iGo Digital and now spinning off a new company called Perceivant. Perceivant, correct. And I got that. Man, I've been practicing that name for about 20 times now. So, Brian, Tell us a little bit about what you do at iGo Digital that led to this new business kind of being sprung out, if you will. Great. Yeah, um, I think uh, a lot of what uh, we do at iGo Digital really led to uh, what we're going to do here at Perceivant. Basically, at iGo Digital, we're a recommendations engine provider. Okay. We process about three terabytes of data a night about what users do and everything they click on sites that you may have seen before like Staples, uh, Procter & Gamble eStore, and, and other high traffic sites. And we realize that a lot of the data that we're collecting and processing is really valuable to the retailer outside of just making recommendations. Sure. And then we started to realize that data could be used even outside of retail and that really led to perceiving. So you're talking about using this outside of retail what what are you going to what are the markets you see the application uh, being used and what is it actually going to do? Yeah, you know, big data has been getting a lot of press lately, and what's I think hard for mid-sized retailers right now or anyone in the mid-sized space is how do I get started with this really technical technology and concepts? And so the first application that we're going after is really a healthcare application. And we're helping people look at treatments, mm -hmm. how people have been treated, how patients have been treated, what process was used to treat them, and then what the outcomes were. Yep. And we're finding that the predictive analytics that we used in predicting behavior online is just as relevant in predicting some of these outcomes as well. Now, Brian, I want to take a second and I want to try to give a real world example to make sure our viewers and our, our followers here really understand what big data is being used at and what that, you know, like how it's being used right now. And I think you and I both uh, clipped the same article when we found that Target. Like, uh, exactly. Tell us about that Target story, what led to that, and how, that, how you see that being applied in the world today with Perceive It. Sure. And I think if you're a big retailer like Target, you have an IT staff or data scientist on staff that can comb through the millions and millions of purchase records for all the people who shop with them. However, a mid-sized retailer probably doesn't have maybe the infrastructure in place, but they're still a good-sized retailer or they're still collecting a lot of data. And so what Perceivant will do is help them collect all of that data, process, flatten and correct that data, and then really analyze it in real time so they can start to make the same sort of predictive analytic decisions that Target's making in their own market and without what, the infrastructure challenge. And what Target did is it actually saw the behavior pattern in the purchases of that, of that consumer and said coupons to the house, right? For, exactly. uh, for the uh, somebody, it got the, the daughter in trouble because <laughs> the father understood that she was pregnant before he even told her, right? It, exactly. I think it created a, a little ruckus at, at Target for a little while, but uh, still uh, a famous application of the technology right now. We, we hope to avoid uh, the sensitive topics of pregnancy. Yeah, right. <laughs> You, the, the, your application in the healthcare industry, how do you see that changing that industry? I mean, what are, what are some, break it down for me and just tell me a real world example of what that would do to change my experience with a healthcare provider. Yeah, I think with uh, what we're trying to do in our first example, the early responders are recording the treatments and outcomes of uh, what happens when the first responders, basically the ambulance, arrives at your house. And, and so, realistically, you could see a actual treatment change uh, in response to, say, um, you know, some casualty or some issue that you've had that you've needed to call 911 and get an ambulance visit. And that could be anything from uh, using a different device 
uh, from a different uh, vendor to um, the order of operation of some of the treatments, mm -hmm. um, you know, in general. So you might be treated differently in the future based on uh, the analytic research that we do. So what you could do with your product and your, your new company is you could allow people in the field to make better decisions on how they're taking care of somebody in an emergency setting because you're aggregating that pattern of to, over time and you're allowing the best practices to surface to the top and to be applied in, real, in a real world setting in the now which could literally save lives. I mean, I'm not exaggerating here. That's, that's the end goal of where we could end up here, right? Yeah, the, the end goal is definitely to improve treatment plans for these first responders. I mean, exactly. That, I mean, and that's really what I, I think is so amazing is like we've been collecting all this data for years and no one's been able to manage it and to, do, to get to the answer in some of these smaller settings. And you see an opening here to apply this these mid-level uh, businesses or, 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 or different applications of this technology in a way in a space that's never had access to that. Is that the real mission and vision for where you're going? Abs absolutely. I think the challenge for someone in their position would be they just don't have a staff of people to really pull together the IT infrastructure and analytics required to do some of this work. But with our technology, we're going to make it accessible to the care providers directly instead of really needing to go through a lot of the normal IT infrastructure that you need in the past. So Brian, you're a first time caller, long time listener. <laughs> you know, we've known each other for a while. You're a serial entrepreneur that goes, uh, I think five under your belt today, right? Right. So um, the, where are you at in this stage of this business? I know I go digital is really doing some great things and you guys have not a lot of traction here. What, you know, I mean, uh, what, where, where are your needs and how can we help? Yeah, we're in early beta stage right now. So, um, y you know, if, if you were to go to our website, you know, it wouldn't be the prime example of the uh, beautiful web experience you'd come to expect at iGo Digital. And I think, uh, you know, as an early seed company, what we've really prioritized is really trying to prove out a use case and working example with our beta customer mm -hmm. and work out some of the details in our technology solution. Uh, and then go back and we'll look for that uh, leap into the, the marketing realm and, and really trying to get the word out about the great work we're trying to do. So you got your post revenue, correct? Correct. So you've got your first client, you got beta, Healthcare space is where you might look for some more lighthouse clients, some more traction. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. And I, and I think we'd also look to go back to our roots and hit a little retail uh, and, and really show the, the diversity of the application of our solution. So you're building your use cases. You're building your case studies. You're looking for some practical business examples that will prove out your, your you know, get the past revenue to concept. Is there, is there a raise in the future? Yeah, I think there probably is. I think this is a highly competitive space. Right. Uh, we begin looking at the market for raising capital. Uh, as you know, that has been uh, challenging the past couple of years, but it, but it really looks bright in our future. And I think that companies in the big data space are, are going to be able to raise money, and, and we're confident that we can do that. And, and, and really, we're in a space here at Indy where we're really starting to see uh, nationally us get accepted as being one of the e-marketing capitals of the of the of really of the whole nation I mean we have 40 headquarters here of e-marketing firms in in the state and I think your guys is example of the DNA and the bandwidth and the really exceptional talent that's in your company uh, is, is why we should be able to draw the, those dollars and, and the, the fact that you mentioned the, the clients that you guys have uh, over at iGo digital it's just a natural evolution what is the one thing we can help you with uh, today off this video? What's the one thing you would like, uh, opportunity you'd like to get out of something like this? Yeah, I just, I think the, uh, the marketing opportunity that says, you know, there is some, some high-tech work going on here uh, in Indianapolis. Uh, that uh, we have a, a good vision for trying to really reach the mid-sized market with our technology and, and do something uh, positive with our technology beyond just uh, maybe a, a few more sales that we've done in the past. I think we're really trying in this case to, to make a little bit bigger impact.
I love what you guys are doing. I love the first uh, application that you have going to market, and I really appreciate reconnecting with you and having you on the show, Brian. Thanks for being on the zip line. Thank you. Bye, John.